Critically acclaimed novelist J.T. Ellerson joins us now. We're excited to have you here. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Now you have an interesting background and I don't know if this contributed to what you write, how you write. Certainly it had to have an influence, but you were a presidential appointee. You worked in the White House. You worked in the Commerce Department. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about how that shaped who you are as a writer. Well, it's, it's interesting that I even ended up in politics because I wanted to get an MFA in writing and my professor told me I wasn't good enough to get published. <laughs> so I went to grad school in politics, met my husband the first night of classes, and I had worked in the White House a couple of times as an intern and everything, and, and starting off there when I get out of college was kind of cool. <laughs> no it, was, it was a lot of fun, and I, yeah, I moved over to commerce, and then I moved out into the private sector. So I don't really write political thrillers, which I will eventually write one. Um, but just you know, learning how to engage at a very high level with very important people, it certainly gives a basis for who the characters are because they have to be able to talk to anybody at any time. They can't be shy. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And dialogue is so important to mm -hmm. moving that story along. Absolutely. A challenge sometimes? Um, it was in the beginning. And my husband, thank goodness, read one of the, the passages and said, you know, you need to write like people talk. And I, I think that's a problem, you know, that all writers have because we're taught grammar, we're taught the proper way to speak, and that's just not how people talk. And, and once I was able to start bringing that in, the characters really came alive. How do you, you know, interestingly enough, uh, Charlene Harris, who was our guest earlier, uh, and a lot of uh, really popular authors, become victims of their success in that you're so busy taking care of everything else that you don't have the time to do what you love and that's writing. So has that happened to you? Um, it, I've worked very hard to make sure that doesn't happen because I have very close deadlines. I write two books a year minimum and I don't want to get caught up in that. So I have a great team around me that helps me with a lot of things and I am pretty disciplined about my time as far as writing. I have to write a thousand words a day. I have to work for at least four hours. I um, have to touch the manuscript every day. As long as I do that, I can balance the rest out. Is it a blessing and a curse? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it used to be you could just write a book and a publisher would publish it and a bookstore would carry it and a library would stock it and you were done. And now your fans have instant access to you and you have to, I mean, you have to be available and talk to them. They're the reason that you're in business. <laughs> so it's it's a balancing act, but it's a lot of fun. I have some pretty awesome fans, so we, we have a good time. Now you've been doing this long enough that you've you've had to make the transition into the digital age age with, with writing. How has that affected? Well, you kind of alluded to that just a minute ago. Sure, sure. I, I mean, I think readers are, they're reading more because they have access to more books. And the, the ones that were going to used bookstores and buying 99 cent copies are now buying the 99 cent ebooks. So we're actually getting paid for it for the first time. It's just a different delivery mechanism. Um, I spoke to the Alabama Library Association yesterday and talked exactly about this, about our challenges for a library in the digital age and staying relevant. And you know, the truth is we're always going to be relevant because it's all story. It's just a different delivery mechanism. And in your opinion, what makes a good story? Character. Character and conflict. Conflict and it's, you got to have conflict on every page and your characters are what drives the story. You can have an incredible plot, but if your characters don't leap off the page, then what's the point? Now, Catherine Coulter, who I've had the pleasure of interviewing before as well, you, you teamed up with Catherine yeah. to write. Is a collaborative effort? Right. She, she was looking for a co-writer. She had an idea for a brand new series, and she didn't have time to write it. And they said, well, why don't you, you know, get a co-writer? And so she hired me. Uh, which has been amazing. We've finished two novels now in the Nicholas Drummond series. He's a Brit in the FBI is the name of the series. And he's a fantastic character. And the series is set in New York in the New York field office. And we have had so much fun. They've turned into big international thrillers, which is something I always have wanted to write. So I'm getting to do some wish fulfillment with her. She's an incredible writer. She's so much fun. And, and a really nice person Oh, she as well. is. She's amazing. She's gracious and smart and funny, and I just absolutely love her. As are you. Oh, thank We've you. We've been talking with J.T. Allison from Outside the Book. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.